Hey team, it's True Love here with another chapter of recap review, chapter 173 of One Piece. It continues the lightning fast pace of Egghead Island we've all been enjoying for the past you know, dozen chapters or so. Uh, we're treated to a cover panel showing Vegapunk accepting a peace prize for his gunpowder flowers that are fort guns and artillery by blowing flowers out of their barrels, causing them to misfire. Um, Judge, Queen and Caesar are in the background looking very upset. This is guiding Vegapunk's character, how we've shown him, back to what I was hoping it was going to be um, This since we first heard about him years ago. The past couple cover panels have had him like holding a gun and looking a little bit menacing and everything. This is showing him in a more positive light, in a more peaceful, looking for what's best for the world. The chapter continues on with Stussy sneak attacking CP0. I love how she uses her what seems to be a devil fruit power to sidestep Luchi's attack with her paper art after image. She quickly uses sea stone to kind of weaken Luchi before biting on the neck and putting him to sleep. I also thought it was really good how Luchi just immediately went into attack her. Uh, it's very much in character for him. It's very normal for him to attack first, um, think questions, attack first and ask questions later. He's a very decisive character. He's very smart. He's very good at his job. I like that we see that Stussy can hold her own against these big guys. And I also like that one of the first things she says is that in a fair fight, she wouldn't actually be able to deal with them. That the boys are really, really strong. After this little scuffle, it's confirmed Stussy is the mysterious person that Vegapunk called and asked for help to find out she can't overwrite Luchi's orders for the Seraphim uh, as she's the same sort of authority level as him. It doesn't really make sense if you ask me. I think if she's the same authority level, she really should be able to make the same calls. Like if Luchi tells them to attack someone and then he tries to tell them to stop attacking them. Isn't that the same thing? Zora and Brooke have a quick word about the Seraphim and how they're coming into attack. Um, Zora also says that one of them looks particularly familiar. And of course he's talking about S. Hawk, the Seraphim that is modeled after Mihawk. They clash and you can actually see the shock on uh, S. Hawk's face as he sees Zoro's strength. So I think the Seraphim probably haven't actually fought anyone with any sort of resistance to their overwhelming strength at this stage. So it's good to see them have a sort of uh, reaction, an emotional reaction, so we know they're not just robots. Finally, thanks to some protection from Sanji, Edison is able to give the order for the Seraphim to stop. We then get an update on Luffy and Chopper. They're running around the lab looking for Vegapunk and Bonnie who have gone missing. We last saw them looking at the big memory that Kuba had expelled from himself, or we can't assume that's what it is. We then get a flash cut to Sphinx Island, the birthplace of Whitebeard. Uh, we get a fair bit of information here. It's revealed that evil marines attacked Sphinx when Marco was in Wano country uh, with plans of stealing all of Whitebeard's treasure. However, out of nowhere comes Edward Weevil, uh, ex Shichibukai and the alleged son of Whitebeard himself comes to defend his father's hometown. Word of Weevil being on, Sphinx gets back to Marine Headquarters who immediately send Ryokuku, Green Bull, out. Um, the Admiral has apparent kind of ease capturing Weevil and bringing him either, who knows, maybe to Impel Down or maybe back to Marine Headquarters. Uh, Marco is now with Miss Barkin, ex-Rox Pirate, who demands Marco go and get her son, go and help her, um, and also give her the inheritance that she says is rightfully her son's. It's here that she says, if you doubt, you know, if you doubt my son's lineage, if, if you doubt that he's the son of Whitebeard, ask Vagabond himself. Now, why would she say that? Maybe Weevil is a clone of Whitebeard. Now, uh, uh, the whole community is blowing up. Now we know there are clones. It's kind of like everyone's a clone. Every Shichibukai is a clone. Zoro is a clone. The thing with Weevil, I think, how it holds a bit more water is all of the stitch marks on him, how he's a little, little bit, you know, off in the face, in his demeanor, the way that he talks. Uh, maybe he's a failed experiment. Maybe he was one of the first ones of Vegapunk ever. Uh, ever cloned. We cut to the finale of the chapter, straight to Admiral Kizuru, the yellow monkey himself. We see snacks and refreshments being bought out, and we also hear that they've all been checked for poison. So obviously, he's given them to a very important person. And it turns out to be Saint J. Garcia Saturn, one of the five elder stars, one of the five elder planets. He mentions that he's met Vegapunk before a long time ago. He also says that he regrets it coming to this. We already know the world government has put out an order to kill Vegapunk, to assassinate him. 
Uh, we also know that Vegapunk used to have, you know, a pretty good relationship with the world government. They were funding his research and development. So now the fact that he's met the Gorosei, he used to be getting funded by them, and now to put it out an assassination order, this guy, he seems genuinely upset that it's come to this, that he has to, um, you know, kind of turn on, betray, um, eliminate uh, Vegapunk. I can't wait to hear the relationship and the backstory between the five elders of Vegapunk and how, how they met, how their whole relationship has been up to this stage. So Oda is really setting the stage for this final endgame of One Piece. Zoro and Saturn arriving at Egghead, Vegapunk Law, Kuma Law, Elbaf, uh, Garp and Law both fighting against Blackbeard. Uh, this whole time, Shanks could be anywhere. The hype train is really taking off and I could not be more excited. I will see you next week.